We're going to take a look at my bottom bait rig, a rig that I use for the vast majority uh, of my carp fishing. Uh, and in the main, it's made from 20 pound Camotex Soft. It's a material that lends itself to all uh, the kinds of bottoms that, uh, that I fish over, so I don't have to change it around too much. Up to a size seven or eight curve shanked hook. It's just a hook that I have massive confidence in and one that I want to use uh, as often as I can. There's obviously an anti-tangle sleeve at one end and a liner liner connected to the hook at the other and uh, it needs to be no more complicated than that. The hook link itself then, uh, I have got a couple of measurements that I use in carp fishing. I never use a ruler because I don't think it needs to be that accurate. But from the top of the finger to my wrist is the amount that I'm going to strip off uh, of the coating on the, on the camo text. And once that's stripped, I double it over and that length will be the length of uh, the hook link itself once it's completed. That's the uncoated uh, portion of it. The first thing to do is to tie uh, a loop in the end uh, of the strip section. Uh, it's only an overhand knot, it's not a load bearing knot, it just needs to make sure that the boilie stop fits in position and stays there. Now, the most important thing whenever you're tying a rig consistent of a hair is to put your hook bait on first and put the boilie stop in to connect it and settle it down. It will allow you to put exactly the length of hair that you want to uh, that you want to achieve. I want mine just to touch the bottom of the hook, so that's the way that I always set it up. I, I never, ever, ever change the length of my hair. The, the, the next thing to do then is to attach the curved shanked hook, and that's done simply with a no knot. So I thread the, the hook link material down through uh, the eye of the hook. Five to seven turns is all I want. That's adequately strong for any situation. Um, and basically, that is a, a rig in itself. It's a rig that is, is very successful to this day, but we can make it just a little bit more effective. Next thing to do is thread a liner liner down your hook link. And when I put it on, I do it, I put, push it over the eye of the hook just enough to cover the no knot that I've just created. And out the back will be half a centimetre to maybe a centimetre of exposed braid that just gives the rig that little bit more flexibility and little bit more movement. Down to the other end, uh, first of all, Thread your anti-tangle sleeve on before you do any knotting in the material. And I'm going to create a loop formed from a figure of eight knot. Uh, the loop doesn't need to be that much that big. It, the knot needs to be hid within uh, the anti-tangle sleeve itself. And uh, once you've done that, that's the rig almost complete. All I like to do at the end is use a tension bar and just tension all the knots and get it tightened down as much as I can and settled in. It's a confidence thing, I know, but uh, at least I know everything is as right as it possibly can be. And uh, that is my bottom bait rig, and it don't get much more simple than that. Whilst hoping desperately that I haven't sent you to sleep talking uh, about my bottom bait rig, uh, I'm going to try desperately now to stop you dribbling down your chin and snoring while you do and talk about my pop-up rig. It's even more simple than the bottom bait rig, to be honest with you. Uh, and all you need is a ready tied chod rig, some 30 pound illusion, a flexi ring swivel, some bait floss and some rig putty uh, and that's all it takes. The first step of creating this uh, hinge stiff link then is to create the boom section. Take as much 30 pound illusion as you need uh, and the first knot is a three turn blood knot attached to the flexi ring swivel on the chod rig itself. Butt it down carefully uh, with a little bit of spit if you need to. And once you trim it off, just blob the end of that knot with a lighter, but be very, very careful when you do. That just 
indicators for any slippage at any time. Not that I've ever had any. At the other end, about six inches away, uh, I'm going to attach that end to a flexi ring swivel. And all I do is pass it through the eye, back over and do an overhand knot. Again, take your time with that knot, wet it if you have to, and just trim it down at the end uh, and make a substantial um, loop, which gives the rig another dimension. The next thing to do is attach a hook bait. And all I do is thread some bait floss through the micro swivel, uh, pull it through with a needle through the bait, cut it off, blob the top uh, down to secure it onto the rig. And finally, uh, with some rig putty uh, attached down by the flexi ring swivel, uh, I can adjust the, the hook bait uh, to any buoyancy that I wish. Normally, I want it to sink as slowly as possible. And uh, after that, we're ready to rock and roll. And finally, if you are a little bit fussy like myself and you want that boom section to be as, uh, as straight as possible, take your tension bars, put them into the, the swivel and the loop at either end, and then you can pull it. I do it 21 times as quickly as you can. Uh, that heats up the material, believe it or not. Hold it for 10 seconds. And when you take those tension bars away, it will be as straight as a die.